So okay. thank, thank you very much for uh, uh, agreeing to take this interview, Simon. Um, no problem, Holger. Where are you? Where are you from? Are you are you not a Norwegian? No, I'm not. I'm from Germany originally, but I've moved to Ireland in 1995 after traveling back and forward for quite some time. So I'm based in Cork Island now. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey there. So Simon, uh, first of all, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, just about yourself, what were you doing prior to um, um, becoming CEO of uh, Hammer Films? Uh, well, I worked in, uh, I worked in cable. Um, I, I ran the content uh, uh, business for Liberty Global, which is one of, um, actually one of the biggest, one of the world's biggest cable companies. Uh, I joined that in 96, 97, and I was part of that sort of, you know, the cable revolution where it, it began to compete with satellite and we did, uh, you know, we were doing uh, broadband internet. Um, we had a brand, broadband internet company called Cello. Um, and um, I spent, yeah, I spent about, Gosh, ten just over ten years there. Oh wow! Prior excellent. To that, prior to that, I was in production. I was uh, original founder of the inter of the uh, of the uh, comic strip, mm -hmm. um, and then I ran the company that made Max Headroom, um, which was an early sort of um, Channel Four show. Um, yeah, I remember it. Do you remember it? I do. I certainly do. Yeah. So that was um, it's funny. Actually, I was thinking about that the other day. That'd be right for right for redoing, wouldn't it? Um, Absolutely, I agree. Great, great character. Um, were, you, were you always a fan of Hammer films itself? What are your favorite types of films? No, I mean, I, I well, I, I always loved the, I always loved the brand. I mean, I, I grew up with an awareness of Hammer. Um, I was too young to see the, the films when they came out originally, uh, obviously. Um, but I just remember them sort of, I remember being aware of them. Um, and and, and the, there was something sort of um, mysterious sort of sexy, spooky. Uh, it was just one of those things that I was aware of without really understanding what it was all about. But somehow, you know, Hammer had always been a brand and a film company that, that had sort of stayed in my imagination. And even, I remember when it was bought by some people in the, in the mid nineties, uh, actually people I knew, and they made some statements about what they were gonna do, and I, and I understood what they were thinking of that you know this was something that was sort of beyond just a, a film company it was a sort of it was in the vernacular you know um and there was a sort of nostalgic love affair with with the company uh for very good reason because it was you know the most self-defining film company that had been in the UK, you know in, in great britain um and and it, it defined an, an era you know because it was making its films in the late 50s you know, early 60s, you know, and it was it somehow it, was, it seemed to fit the period, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. How do you think that, um, well, am amongst the old classic Hammer fans, uh, the, the Hammer company at the moment is, is usually referred to as New Hammer. How much do yeah. you think it is fair to refer to it as New Hammer? And how much do you think uh, your, your new projects are a continuation of Old Hammer? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't say it's New Hammer like they say New Labour, you know, it's not a political statement. Uh, <laughs> And I don't, I don't, I don't really call it New Hammer. I, mean, I, I just, I mean, it's basically, you know, it is Hammer, um, but it's, but it's, you know, if you like, reimagined or rebooted for now. I mean, you know, we, I, I try to say to myself, you know, what films would Hammer be making today had it stayed in production through the seventies, eighties, nineties, and so forth? You know, how would, how would it have evolved? And what we did was we, we looked at the sort of genres within genre that Hammer made, you know, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. We looked at the mini Hitchcocks, you know, the psychological thrillers mm -hmm. like Nanny and The Scream of Fear. You know, we looked at the sci-fi, uh, you know, um, uh, strand like Quatermass. Uh, we looked at, you know, the, what we call The Walking Dead and we thought, well, The Woman in Black, uh, which we're now making, as you mm -hmm. know. We looked at, you know, the psychological thrillers, you know, The Resident, which is coming out next year with Hilary Swank. The vampire mythology, so let me in. So we tried to honor, you know, those strands that Hammer, you know, really sort of invented its own way, or its own approach for in, in those in those times. And said, so, well, how would we do that today? You know, what would be our house style today? Um, and clearly, you know, things have moved on. You know, you can't. I mean, the golden age of filmmaking, which is, I think, it was in Britain in, in the late fifties, early sixties. You know, with Hammer, they had a family. You know, they. They had the same actors, the same script writers, a lot of the same directors and crews. It was a family, and it's wonderful. And I and I, I wish the world was like that. 
Absolutely. So, sadly, it isn't. I mean, there are some filmmakers um, who tend to, you know, who work with the same people. I mean, you know, people like, you know, I don't need to go through the list, but but some of the auteurs like to do that, and I, I think it's great. Um, but sadly, it's very difficult to do that as a film company to have, you know, a repertory group like that. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because they, you know, performers move around a lot more now, and agents don't want them to get too tied into things. But I certainly hope we have writers and directors and, that we can work with again. Tell me a little bit about uh, Let Me In, because uh, this is a remake of a highly acclaimed Swedish movie. So as such, I must admit, initially I had some, uh, some issues uh, seeing yet another remake. But from people that uh, have seen it now, I've heard absolutely fantastic things about it. People have told me that it, it's actually the, the best vampire movies of the century so far. So <laughs> how much is it a remake? How much is it uh, a new adaptation of the original yeah. novel? Well, look, I, I think it's very fair comment, you know, and, and you know, we, 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 we knew the book and we saw the Thomas's film and thought it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. But we honestly thought that it wasn't going to get a wide audience and it didn't really get a wide audience. It's got a, a big art house audience. And we were already committed to doing, if you like, our version. And so the truth is that we honored, in many ways, we honored Thomas's original because there are quite a lot of scenes that, that you know, Matt just decided that he would almost shoot in his style but would be very similar. But at the same time, he brought his own, his own perspective to it, his own dynamic, his own creativity to it. And so he's made it, I think, more accessible you know, to a wider audience. And it's not just about being in the English language. It's just more accessible in terms of the characterization. It doesn't leave so many you know, unanswered questions, which is what the Swedish version, I believe, does. So I think it's a version, if you know what I mean. Um, You, you know, Holger, I, I think it's a version as opposed to a remake. And I think that's why people have, have responded so, so well. You know, we haven't, we haven't made an Americanized version. I mean, we, we basically had to keep our mouth shut. You can imagine when we announced that we were doing it, we had a lot of criticism. Why bother? You know, it's a classic. And we were already committed to doing it. And the truth of the matter is that it's been great because obviously we're very nervous waiting for the film to be finished. But we knew we had a, a beautiful film. And that Matt Reeves has honored the original and honored the book. And what's interesting is the author, John Avida Lindquist, saw the film a couple of weeks ago. And he was, he was really moved by it, actually, and, and very excited. He said, you know, the truth is this. Thomas Alfredson made a great Swedish movie. And Matt Reeves has made a great English language movie. So everybody's happy. Perfect. Um, will your movie version include some uh, elements of the source novel that hadn't been incorporated in the Swedish movie? Because it has it had a couple of darker moments or grisier no, moments. Mm -hmm. No, it won't. It won't. Okay. I, I, and I don't think I don't think it's just I, I don't think it's necessary. And I know that I know the um, I know the uh, darker things that you're referring to, and I I don't think it was appropriate to, to bring those into the film. And I don't think it actually lends anything, frankly, to the story of the children either. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it's it's almost. You know, one of John's red herrings in a way, and and I and I don't think it's appropriate. So so no is the answer. Okay, perfect. Tell me a little oh. bit about the other projects that you that you have um, ongoing at the moment. It's the Resident that also features Christopher Lee, the woman yeah. in black. Yeah, the Resident um, is a is a psychological thriller. You know, in the sort of reign of Mini Hitchcock, if you like, which we talked about earlier, which is coming out in March, um, and and it's a psychological thriller. Um, uh, you know, and it's it's. Um, It's based on a, um, the story is about a, a, a woman, you know, who, uh, who rents an apartment um, and then she becomes um, harassed, to say the least, by her landlord. It's a, it's a, it's a classic Hitchcockian type of thriller mm -hmm. and it's, it's really exciting. Um, that's coming out in March. And then The Woman in Black is Susan Hill's novella, which Jane Goldman's adapted, uh, who you'd be familiar with from Kick-Ass and The Debt and uh, Stardust. And James Watkins, who, who directed Eden Lake, is directing. We're, we're actually filming that right now. We're halfway through production. Um, and Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe is it's his first big role after Harry Potter. Uh, and that's coming out probably this time next year. So, you know, we're very busy. Um, you know, we made a film in Ireland called The Wakewood. I was uh, wondering about it. What happened to that one? It's coming out, in, uh, it's coming out after The Resident. It's, uh, it may come out just before, actually. We're just discussing right now with Vertigo. It's a small Irish film. It's great, actually. It's really fun. It's the first picture we made. We were just cutting our teeth, you know, in production. Um, it's it's a sort of almost like a homage to the old-fashioned films in a way, like The Wicker Man. And it's it's really good. It's really good. Um, 
And we, you know, we are discussing at the moment whether that will come before or after the resident next year. So, so there is still the hammer connection with the Wakewood because at one stage it looked as if there was no hammer connection anymore. No, there, were, there always was. There's, there's always a lot of chatter on the internet, as you know, Holger. But <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and uh, you just let that drift on, and eventually, you know, you, when it actually comes out, you know, say, okay, there you go. Now we know what's going on. <laughs> Perfect. Listen, um, I know we're coming to the end. Can you quickly talk about? Uh, I, I read recently you, you're going to get involved in TV series, book publishing, uh, online gambling. Even can you give us a quick overview about uh, what, what else you have in mind outside of films? Well, we, we basically, you know, what, what I've said, really, the main, the main issue is, is this idea of intellectual property and stories. And, and one of the things we're trying to do is, we, you know, we're trying to sort of create uh, opportunities in other media, you know, for material for our film business and our TV business. So we are, we, we are uh, we're in a publishing venture with Random House where we, are, we have a hammer imprint and we're going to be, they're going to be publishing with us, you know, four to six books a year. Uh, which will help to serve our ambitions in film and television. Uh, and we are planning a theatre, uh, Hammer Theatre of Horror, which is, you know, traditional theatre, but, but frightening, you know, horror theatre, if you like. Wow. Uh, which, which is going to be, um, we were making an announcement about that the next couple of weeks. So really it's just about working in other media and other brands, you know, other areas of media um, to, to create, you know, intellectual property, because that's the stuff that we, you know, that's our lifeblood, if you like. Um, so that's what the, these all these connections are, and, and um, you know it's exciting times for Hammer. Perfect. Listen, Sam, have you got any final words from your side? Stuff I should have asked. Stuff that you want to um, make make sure we all know. No, I, mean, I, think, I think you've asked all the good questions. All the you know, and you obviously know your stuff. It's great, and uh, I, I appreciate your time. Listen, thank you very much, Simon. Thank you very much. Okay.